Hello boys and girls. So today I thought I'd talk about some of the snow performance nozzles that they have for their V2 sets or their V2 chart. And that's going to be tested or I'm testing it with their 300 PSI pump. Now the 300 PSI pump that they supply, which is their extreme environment pump now, one of their newest ones. I mean, it didn't just come out, it came out a year, two years ago. Um, this thing supposedly is delivered to you at 200 PSI. So they have like a little set screw on it at the top of the pump. Um, and you can adjust that to either reduce pressure, increase pressure. I don't know what it can reduce to. Is it under 100 PSI or at 100 PSI once at the minimum setting? But apparently when it's delivered to you, it's 200 and the maximum setting is 300. So that's what we got to go on. I don't have a pressure gauge, so I can't confirm that. The only thing I can go on is amperage that I'm using on uh, this little test read that I have. Now, something that I was, reason why I actually came out and wanted to do this is I was a little confused. Um, their version one, so Snow Performance had a version one nozzle, and now they have version two that they're giving out. I don't even know if you can get the version ones anymore. They're probably they're obsolete. I'm assuming um, maybe you can buy replacements, but their current kits come with the version two. And when you're looking at the version one sheet, a number six nozzle does like 625 milliliters per minute. Same thing, cc. So 625 cc's. The newest nozzle, version two, number six. Uh, it would do 378 milliliters per minute, according to their chart. And something also to understand and remember is the version one chart is at 40 PSI. So they're claiming that that number six nozzle, version one, does 625 cc's at 40 PSI. Version two, number six, does 378 cc's at 100 PSI. But what I don't get is why are they rating things on a point that the pump isn't doing? Um, if you're supplying a pump at 200 PSI to your clients, why not make a chart that is actually at 200 PSI head and then that way people can figure out what's going on. So if, if they wanna increase the pressure or reduce the pressure, they know at least when that pump's supplied to me, that chart is in accordance to where the pump is. So again, if, if you're, you know, have a 200 PSI pump and they give you a number six nozzle, then I would actually understand that that number six is gonna do that flow at the way the pump is given to me. Anyways, that's not the case. Why they do it, I don't know. I'm sure there's some kind of amazing scientific explanation for it. I don't care now at this point. Anyways, I did this little test. So here we go, flip the camera around. We've got the, basically this would be like a stage one, right? There's no um, uh, programmer or controller on this setup. I just got my reservoir. It is minus 40 this. Uh, we're in Canada, that's why it's in Celsius. The minus 45 Celsius is used with the glycol. So this should just, just be meth and water. We've got nylon lines. We've got our 300 PSI pump in this little, Measuring glass here, we've got the check valve, and I have the nozzle. On this one, I have a number four. Um, this little measuring cup is my wife's. She is going to be pissed. Anyways, uh, for this little test, what I've been doing, plug it in. There we go, I've got this little, turn it off. We've got this little power supply here, it's an AC-DC converter. I've got it set up at 13.8. Um, this is basically the reason why I have it set up as 13.8 volts is because that's your average AGM setup. It's going to be charging at 13.8. So if you have a AGM setup, obviously this is the voltage. I have it set up at 10 amps. I can go higher, but I don't need to. This pump, if it goes over 9.6 amps, it basically detunes itself. And now I'm not just saying that because Snow Performance has told me that or so. I physically tested it. And if you put more load on it with the set screw, the set screws in here, it actually starts detuning itself, okay? It'll detune and meaning that it'll start jumping around in voltage. It doesn't like that load. So I've also checked out uh, Ohm's law on this. Basically, if I put in the equation 13.8, I've checked the resistance, I get 0.7 right on the ball. Uh, that gives me 9.6 amps. So everything seems legit in that sense. I've also tried, just in case, have a fully charged battery. This thing's like 850 amps, it's fully charged. I put my charger on it, supplying at 13.8 with 12 amps, put it on the pump, and it flowed the exact same results. So even if I increase the amperage or whatnot, it doesn't matter, the tests flow the same. It's just in this scenario, I don't have to keep charging this thing. So I can get an exact apples to apples between each nozzle. So that's why we're using this baby. All right, something to note, um, on their V2 chart, they actually have their nozzle. So let's say you had a number six, which would be this right here. 
it's six gallons per hour. So the actual number on the nozzle, I think it's this one, no, this one here. Number six is actually six gallons per hour. So if you have a number 12, it's 12 gallons per hour. Number four, four gallons per hour. That is not the same as version one. Version one, it's not the same ratio. Um, so basically, this is the set. I've already showed this to you. I throw this in here. I would have a timer set. Now I'm obviously using my iPhone for this recording. So normally before I had it set to here side, I would start it at a minute, have the pump output activate its power, and I would stop it at that minute range and get our ratings. What we got here is basically the number four, number six, and number 12 nozzles that I have. Um, I have a number 12 just for the sake, I, I bought it thinking that maybe I'd be using it, but in the kit, it comes with a number four and a number six. So these are V2 stage one kit, this is just the nylon line one. I think if you got the stainless line, you still get the number four and the number six. And if I was to crank out this screw all the way, I would get nine amps. Okay, nine, nine, six is where I told you to stop in a sense. And that would produce on the number four, 475 milliliters per minute. Again, nine amps. If I was to completely unwind this screw, giving you the minimum setting, 375 milliliters per minute, which is six amps. As the pump's delivered to you, so supposedly that's 200 PSI, which is basically, if you wanna know what it feels or where to set it at to, uh, 200 PSI, um, I realize it's about 300, uh, two, what am I saying, 300? Three turns before the when you start to feel more resistance than normal. So as you start turning, it's like the regular amount of resistance, uh, and then it starts getting really hard. That's where I'm assuming is the maximum, and it's basically three turns before that. So at that point, supposedly it's 200 psi. We got 400 milliliters per minute, and I was getting anywhere between seven to seven and a half uh, amps. That's what I was getting. So that's on a number four. If you had a number six fully unwound, meaning the lowest setting, so at that six amp range, you would get 525 milliliters per minute. If you were to completely max it out, that 996 amp range, you got 500, uh, 750 to 775 milliliters per minute. Now all these tests, just so you know, I've been doing about five tests on every one of them to try and get an average. And basically this one, that's, you know, I, I just, that was the range basically. Uh, the number six for the lowest setting, it was always at 525. I couldn't really change it. I also did the number 12, just because I have it. Full setting at the minimum, it's 775 milliliters per minute. Again, six amps. Completely maxed out, this thing is doing 1,050 to 1,075 milliliters per minute. If I was to set it at that, amp, at that seven amp range, which is supposedly 200 PSI, I would get 825. Now, why did I really go through all this and why did I choose that number 12? I mean, in a way it was because of their sheet. I am running in this 21 to 24 PSI range. And let's say arguably I'm five, 550. Um, they're supposed to be what, 10 to, 10 to 11, 12. Um, I just jumped up and went for 12. They do say down here, if you have an intercooler to reduce it slightly, whatever. I, I just, I chose a 12 because I had it in stock and I wanted to test it. So I don't know if I'm gonna be fitting the 12, but this is why I wanted it. Mainly because if you had a number six maxed out, you're doing that 775 range. If you have a number 12, minimum setting on your pump, so you're instead of pumping out nine amps, maxing this thing out, getting it hot, detune it to six amps, guess what? You're doing 775. So I still have room to grow. I have 300 milliliters per minute to grow if I needed to. So if let's say I'm in, I don't know, it's not as hot out or something like that, I'm not really pushing it, I can turn down the set screw to the minimum, 775. And then if let's say I'm at, I don't know, a circuit track or so, and I'm seeing some detonation, I wanna get a little bit more out of the pump, wind up that screw, I know I have 300 milliliters per minute available on tap, right? If I only wanted 500, then I can use that number six and then obviously have some buffer of a good two, 200 milliliters. So there is probably a good range, maybe I might get a number 10, maybe I might get a number eight, I don't know. 
But what's cool about this pump is obviously the ability to turn it down. Now, it isn't that it doesn't always have a 300 psi buffer. Like if you were using the number four, you only have what it's 100 psi, uh, 100 milliliters, right? But you can still see what you can do. Um, also, to note, let's say if you had the number four completely on the lowest setting, which gives you 375, the six or the four gallons per hour actually gives you 252 at 100 psi so that's why i was saying before that i mean as they as snow recommend or has their guide set for work v2 it's at 100 psi and that's nowhere near what your actual pump is going to be flowing even at the minimum setting and again i don't know what this thing is doing it's obviously not doing 100 it's doing more than that because they're saying that the four gallons per hour, which is 252 milliliters per minute or cc's, it, it, it's not even doing that. Like the lowest setting I'm getting is 375. So I've got over 120 milliliters per minute, 120 cc's over what this thing is set for number four. So on number four, it, it's just, it flows great, right? It just, it doesn't make any sense, their actual sheet. So at least this way with this test, I'm able to figure out what what nozzle size I might need and obviously it's going to be trial and error really I don't know I can't just pick out of the sky 500 cc's and, and, and assume that that's going to be it but at least now I can actually choose a nozzle know what the minimum setting is know what the maximum setting is test a few and then actually see if it's something that you know maybe I might bump up a nozzle reduce like I was saying bump up a nozzle uh, reduce the amperage on it maybe get better longevity out of the pump instead of running it hot um, so I'll show you what I'm saying about the, the pump itself when it's at that maximum setting. Now this thing's going to vibrate a little bit, but it is what it is. So right now, let's take this thing out. We're just going to unscrew it. This is going to be the minimum setting and I've got the number four in there. Now you guys are probably going to ask me what size am I using here to unscrew this. Um, I'm in Canada, A, and I think this is a standard because none of my metric Allens fit. So I have a torque socket, which is a T6. So it's like a little utility screwdriver, T6 torque. It fits the little center. So I can turn this thing all the way out, remove it. No water is going to come out of there, no air. Anyways, this will be the minimum setting. So this is number four. And we're just going to show you what the actual test does. So here we are. We're just under seven amps, filling it up. I'm not worried about catching it all right now. And I'm just gonna show you the actual adjustment. So you can see, as I start tightening it, that would be about 200 PSI, right? And I can get up into that nine amp. Let's keep going. There you go. Once you hit this range, you're good. As soon as it goes over that 9.6, 9.8, it just doesn't really like it, see? And again, I've, I've turned up the amperage on it, on my charge, on my um, AC-DC. I've even, I've even used the battery itself with the charger on it. So it's a fully charged battery, 850 amps. Put the charger at AGM status, so it's charging at 13.8. Uh, 12 amps even if I put it at the charging of 75 it doesn't make any difference the flow is the same whether I use this setup or I use this setup again the only reason why I'm going to use this setup is because it's exact I can always have 13.8 not that I'm going to be depleting the battery and working the charger more more often um, so I have this set and when you get over that 9.6 it just doesn't like it 10 amps doesn't like it and it makes sense because it is not it is 9.6 amps what it says to an ohm's law they supply the thing with what a 15 or 20 amp fuse and i mean if it's nine amp, let's say it's 10 amps you're giving 30 percent more it's a 13 amp fuse that it would need for startup or it would pop so 15 would be the minimum and you want a buffer so they're giving you a 20 amp fuse so i don't see this thing pulling more than that uh, going over 10 amps or so but again this is it's just pretty cool little experiment that i did um, just to show you guys that you don't need to have a maxed out nozzle. You can give a larger nozzle, run a lower amperage, and get that same thing. But again, you're going to have to do this little science experiment that I've done um, to try and figure out what your minimum, maximum is. But it's not hard, man. Just talk with the wife, get a little measuring glass, hope she doesn't give you shit, because mine's going to fucking nail me up at this. But um, 
And then just put up a washer bottle, put some fluid into it, have the nylon line set, and you have this little rig. Not everybody is gonna have this little AC-DC converter that I do, but you've all got a battery. Take the battery of your car, run jumper cables, whatever you wanna do. Um, heck, you could even put it on the, on the engine of the car, run off the auxiliary point, and you can do this little test. So everybody can do it. Um, hope you guys like it. Catch you on the next one.